Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Are You Serious? I'm an American woman who lived in North Africa. I am very familiar with Middle Eastern culture, having lived it firsthand for a few years. And I am commenting on Chantal's content because I feel that she's putting out a lot of misinformation and inaccuracies. And unfortunately, also propagating negative stereotypes so right now and and it's not going to be boring it's not going to be a long rant you know i do intend to help educate the public on things that she's misinforming you about and things that um things that you might just be curious about in general i am an american so it's coming from an american perspective i might get some things wrong um but overall i can tell you that i think my perspective is far more accurate and well-rounded than Ms. Chantal's. Today we're going to take a look at my husband spoils me and takes me shopping for abayas and hijabs. All right. Well, we have Salah in a very wrinkled shirt. Uh, nice jacket. Seems to fit him pretty well. All right. Let's see where this is going. Looks like they're at a restaurant starting off. I've never seen this. We are back. <laughs> Welcome to a new video. That looks like a heart attack on a bun. My goodness. Like one of those is even like not, not, not a great choice for a meal. And then you're going to get two of them and put cheese between them. <sighs> okay. Now I'm going to make a prediction that she says this was so fresh. I don't know. I don't know. Just a hunch. I can tell you, though, that um, fast food where I lived in Egypt was extremely fresh and there was a reason for it. Fast food in a chain like Burger King, McDonald's is very expensive and the average person living there can't afford it. So it's not like uh, it's not like there's just a bunch of people there with like kids and families and people just stopping off on their lunch break. It's kind of, it's more of a treat for people to go there in general. So they make the food to order because they can't, and all this stuff is imported, of course. So they can't just like have it ready to go and then no one comes in. That's why it's so fresh. <laughs> it is actually fresh and hot. Like it is better there because it's fresh. It hasn't been sitting under a, a lamp for half an hour, hour, two hours. Okay, this is my kind of thing. Yeah, I'm gonna slow it down. There you go, feeders. That one was for you. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, so we have two optic shops next to each other. All right. One here, one here. Just like an optician, you know, get your eyes checked, get some glasses, whatever. Um, this is very, this is normal. This is normal. And so I'm going to, I'm going to go through my pictures and insert some of mine so that you, you can compare like to another country that it is, you know, this isn't that, this isn't different. This isn't crazy. Like, oh my gosh, where is she? This, this is normal. Okay, jewelry store. Very nice. Um, yeah, I'm even looking at the roads here. So I don't know if this is probably just for pedestrians, just a walking space. Um, I think she, she says it's the sook. And you'll see how now this is something that I had to get used to the concept that I individually was responsible for my own safety. Now you'd be like, well, yeah, duh, but sidewalks aren't necessarily going to be even the roads that you're walking on could be crumbling 
There could be stuff sticking up out of the road. You are literally, you have to watch your step everywhere you go. Now, I don't know about the infrastructure of Kuwait. Where I lived in Egypt, it's a far less developed country. It has come up considerably, but there, believe me, it's, there are still challenges for sure. So I'm just, that's why I'm looking at like, okay, this is uneven, but I mean, that's right up against here. So you wouldn't necessarily trip on that, but see how like the road kind of dips in. Like, why is this sinking? What is this? You know? So that's why I'm looking at the ground. <laughs> Let's see if she's talking yet. It's in Arabic. Oh yeah. Let's see what she how she describes this. The souk and Samia looking for a baya. All right, she's in Samia. Kuwait is such a small country. I'm starting to learn more about it geographically where things are, the type of districts where people are living. So I hope to bring more of that to you, just what I'm learning from that. Now to me, and I don't know how, you know, again, I don't know how it is in Kuwait, but if I were shopping legitimately for an abaya, I would not be going to the Sukh. I um, would go to a mall and there are amazing malls in Kuwait. One is called the Avenues and it's the newest, it's huge, and there are beautiful shops that sell abayas. Beautiful. Like, you're like, oh, <laughs> like, am I even well dressed enough to walk in there? Like, they're, they're seriously upscale. So I, you know, and it might be different in Kuwait, but they, you know, they have more malls than Egypt does for sure. Um, but this is where you would take a tourist. Generally, tourists will be here. See, this lady here isn't veiled. Um, and you know, you don't have to be, especially if you're, if you're not Muslim, you know, it's not, this isn't a super conservative, you know, the Taliban isn't in Kuwait. Okay. So <laughs> I mean, you know, general expression, just dress modestly, you know, as if you were going like into a church and not on a summer day, <laughs> long sleeve top, you know, coat, whatever pants. Even this is, this is fine. I think these are like knee-high boots. No problem. No problem. So, but a souk and the souks in Egypt, that's where you go as a tourist. And I would go back when I was living there too, because it was just kind of fun to reminisce. Like, how am I seeing it this time around? It was very different going again as someone living there. So I'm kind of still sticking with that I think he might be portraying himself as a tour guide, taking this Westerner around and showing her things. So a souk is just an Arabic term for market. So there's different shops, as you can see. This sector or area, I should say, was full of jewelry. There's a lot of gold here in the Gulf countries. So these are buyers here. Um, yeah, this isn't, um, these aren't going to be very expensive. They will be very affordable. There's nothing wrong with buying one here. You could probably buy three of them for the same price that you could at the mall. You know, none of these handbags are going to be great quality. It's just, you know, these are individual vendors. This isn't like one big place that is owned by the same person. Really good quality gold. There's also a lot of abaya and hijab shops and other various things, usually. And sometimes you can find even cooler stuff in the tourist areas. Because, like, they won't, you know, they're made for tourists. So, like, sometimes you'll find, like, oh, my gosh, look, this has sequins all over it. <laughs> I didn't see this at the shop in the mall. So, you know, there's pros and cons to everything. There's different ways to look at it. At a pretty decent price. And they see this here. This looks like, yeah, this is indented. Looks like the floor broke essentially, and they just took it up. So, this is a tripping hazard. And if you're just walking along with your friend talking, da -da -da -da, you can easily, easily catch your shoe on this. Easily. That's why I'm looking at the ground. Like, how safe is Kuwait? Is it, is it like Egypt? Like, yeah, things are falling apart. Definitely. Okay. So, Crown Diamond. 
We buy gold and diamond. This guy's like, why are you filming here? I rely on a kind of... And he's like, oh, she's a tourist. Okay. <laughs> negotiate kind of system. Yes. Where you can talk down the price or negotiate a price. It's usually how it works. That is true. You go to the mall, you're paying the price that's, that's listed. In a sook, you are absolutely expected to negotiate. And it can be even a little bit fun, but you can't get too caught up and start like, um, you know, bickering about what a, what's the equivalent of like one US dollar. <laughs> like sometimes you just gotta let it go and, and keep the conversions in mind while you're doing it. As opposed to an actual commercial store, branded store. Mm -hmm. pockets which is convenient since we walk a lot <laughs> stripes on the side what an elegant he likes yeah. this one i like that one yes what size is that 58 54 54 but it looks big huh yeah that's gonna be too Perfect. small <laughs> <laughs> he's so it's sure of himself What do you guys think of that one? I don't like it, personally. You like it? Yeah, it's nice. It's nice, but... but... <laughs> so, despite the previous video saying that we liked the outfit, the abaya, I didn't end up getting it. I did a few more turns in it, looked in the mirror some more, and I decided I don't really find it that flattering. So I didn't end up getting anything, unfortunately, at the souk in oh. Salmia. So we're going to head on to somewhere else where I know hmm. they'll have my sizes and okay. something that I like. All right, let's go there. Because I've been there before. <laughs> just a, a note for editing. You know, you could put some B-roll here. We're just looking at a, a thumbs down, you know, just, I don't know. Sometimes you just got to get a video out and you do what you can. I get it, but okay, just, just a, a comment. Yella. Hello okay, guys. Yella. Hey guys. So I'm here looking for um, some abayas. Let me uh, bring that back up to normal because that's intolerable. Okay. And, um, yeah, we're going to check out Dream Mall now. So oh, okay. Good old Dream Mall. I really like it here. I always find Abaya's in my size that I like for an affordable price. So, yalla. Cool. Abaya Bizen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes Salah looks so attractive, right? And sometimes it's like, ugh. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's whether he's chiming in on denigrating women YouTubers or if he's just like, being cutesy by a reason like okay he's cute look at this a big laughing face all right. all right all right i know my laughing seemed exaggerated in the last clip but anytime i hear someone use the term beezing i can't help it i laugh hysterically it just makes me so happy mcdonald's hmm so you know i'm looking up uh you know we got wiring coming out of here so um i thought that kuwait was a little um was a little better off than egypt like this you would see in egypt like and you know most of these lights aren't the light bulbs haven't been changed
Okay, so I hope she's going to explain who these people are. That would be prudent of her to do, especially since she's been filming in public. So if authorities ever go through her phone, watch her videos, it would be prudent for her to say something nice about these people here. Okay, so <laughs> now let me ask you guys, you're like, you're watching like, oh, new couples vlog, yay, right? When you see this, are you like, whoa, probably, right? Like, who are they? Why isn't it mentioned? Why? I mean, you would think like Salah, the tour guide, could at least give a little background as to who we're looking at here. Okay, so I'm j I mean, I just looked at Wikipedia. Okay, this isn't like an extra, <laughs> this isn't a difficult step to take to add to your vlog. And she's editing after the fact. She could do a voiceover at this point. Um, so, because I, I don't know much about the government there. Um, so there is an emir, which I believe it's this guy, the current one over here on the far left. I believe, and if I'm wrong, and if you know for sure, please correct me and please cite your source so that I can check it. So the current incumbent is Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Sabah, and he has been the Emir since September 30th, 2020. Now this is the th succession to the throne of Kuwait is limited to the descendants of Mubarak Al Sabah. The position of emir is also traditionally alternated between the two main branches of the Sabah family, the Al Ahmed and the Al Salem branches. The reigning emir must appoint an heir apparent within one year of his accession to the throne. The nominee for consideration as crown prince has to be a senior member of the Al Sabah family. The prime minister is appointed by the emir. And I do see some pictures here on Wikipedia, but I don't, it's going to take me a while to line everybody up with their names. So I don't know if I'm really going to go all in there, but this is all the same family. The head is, it's not a king, it's an emir, and it's all one family. So this is the ruling family of the entire country right here. And it would have been prudent of her to mention something, something, even if she just said, this is the ruling family of Kuwait. Like we, uh, we respect them and they've done a lot for us or for Kuwaitis. That would have been a good thing for her to say. Okay. But you know, she didn't. So, all right. I'm going to get some for the kitchen and bathroom. What's okay. Your size, babe? Oh, it's Euro. <laughs> oh no, it's Euro. <laughs> so many conversions, so little time. 40 Euro size, huh? Size yeah, 10. 40 would be about eight, eight and a half or so. That no. Would work. I mean, I wear a 39 and I'm size nine. So. The Sheen shop in here. Oh, wow. I think we have a new collection here. Oh, maybe for winter or something. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Let's so so uh, Salah has been um, a buyer shopping before because he notices that this display over here is a new collection for winter. Check the size. That fits her. That fits her. It's um, flowing. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it is what it is, right? But it's not clinging to her excessively. Um, if she really wanted to be like ultra modest, she would get a hijab that kind of drapes down over over the bust. This is nice. Okay. Here we go. She ended up buying it's that elegant, one. Baby. Yeah, this is more my size, bigger sizes here at Dream Mall, which I like. Awesome. Size 60. Okay. All right, I'm going to try another one on now. Okay, babe. See you. <laughs>
She's sweating. So I don't have that on my spreadsheet yet. <laughs> a size 60 in US. Oops. The spreadsheet is growing as I expected. So I'm reading about the, how to calculate it so that I can, you know, put it on the spreadsheet like a range. And um, some information I'm reading says converting English and American sizes is difficult as visitors have to memorize a different starting value instead of the principal minus three or minus two. So the best rule of thumb and what I did when I was there, try a bunch on, see what your size is, and then stick with that size. And just like anywhere, like your size might run a little bit small in one store or a little bit larger and, you know, hold it up, you know, try it on, whatever. But if you generally, like if she knows now, like I'm a size 60, then she should just keep that number in mind. And she doesn't even have to worry about what it converts to. And that's one way to help yourself assimilate to the new culture. Stop thinking about, I wear a size, you know, 3XL, 4XL, I wear a size 60. Just like try to keep it simple because your your brain gets tired. <laughs> your brain gets tired of doing all the conversions. It's constant. It's almost constant. And if, you know, if you're with someone who doesn't know how to do the conversions or is clumsy with it, like you're working extra hard. The chart I'm looking at doesn't go up to 60. It only goes up to 49. And 49 euro is a 4XL US. In the UK, it's a size 23. So I'll, I'll keep looking though. You know, we have to update the spreadsheet. I see you. And the other That's one. That's nice. How is that about you, baby? What do you think? You like it? I think it's cool. It's kind of quiet and beautiful. Oh, yeah, it's very subtle. All right, so I think I'll get this one too. Now, for me, this is not subtle, but, you know, everyone has different taste. But I think she did end up buying this one. Okay. All right, guys, so I'm going to get these two abayas and some hijabs, and then we'll be out of here. Okay. Yalla. Why are you so handsome, though? For real. For real. That was a voiceover. She wasn't talking directly to him. Why are you so handsome, though? For real. Why is he sitting there filming himself? For real. And this is the thing, the chairs <laughs> in, in stores, like in, you know, women's shops, um, there will be chairs because the men will just, you, you go in, the man sits down <laughs> and then the woman just looks and typically you'll have, you'll have someone like a sales attendant, like stay with you the entire time. And that's something to get used to. But if you're in a sook like this, they're used to dealing with tourists. So if and it doesn't matter how much you try to disguise your nationality, they know you can spot people. So after being there for a couple of years, I mean, I would see tourists and be able to tell where they came from. And like Americans definitely stick out like a sore thumb. Canadians do tend to blend in a little more with Europeans, but so the sales attendant if she recognized you as being american she would back off a little bit knowing that americans don't really don't really like that they don't consider it um like a full service um experience you know like just let me look i'll let you know <laughs> for real babe Mm -hmm. So now you're looking for the hijab? Yes. Okay. Looking for ones that cover the neck. All right, so I now I cover the neck. You can get some that go down to your butt, you know? Now, for me, for me, just my personal, you know, I'm just giving you my perspective. I would probably not, I don't see anything here that stands out to me at all. So I would probably go to a hijab shop and there will be specific ones that don't sell a buy is just hijab. There are stores that you, it's only scarves and scarf pins and things <laughs> and underscarves to put under the scarf so it doesn't slip. 
So for me, I'd be like, all right, let's go someplace else for the hijab. All right, so I now have my own pair of bathroom and kitchen shoes. Okay. And she needs bathroom shoes because um, sometimes the floor is going to be wet. If um, if someone is doing wudu in the bathroom, if the floor is going to get wet, for sure, it does. So some people like leave these like just inside the bathroom doorway or outside. Like I, for me, I just use flip flops, like regular old, like old navy flip flops. Hey, Chantal here. So I figured I should probably explain. The <laughs> Who? What? Kitchen and bathroom shoes. Okay. Because it's just to keep the feet clean. So whenever I got here, Sala had a pair of Crocs to use in the bathroom and in the kitchen. But I never ended up getting my own until now, and his feet are like size 13, so I'm just happy to have my own pair. We just never got around to it until now. Okay. All right, and I got a few more hijabs and undercaps. That was one of the first things my former partner purchased for me. We did our first shopping trip, and he's like, you need flip-flops. I'm like, why? My feet get cold, and he's like, they're not going to get cold. <laughs> and he was right. <laughs> so I got this hijab very thick material mm -hmm. it's not see-through well if if she i have see-through scarves and it's i don't know if she knows about this yet you um there are cotton like basically it's like a hood or sometimes just a cap that you'll put like you tie your hair up or you put it in a bun or whatever right and then you put like the the cotton um cap or essentially a hood over your head and then you wrap the scarf so it doesn't matter if the scarf is see-through because you're only going to see that cap and the cap and you don't have to wear the cap the cap just helps to keep the scarf safe it keeps it safe <laughs> Don't worry, scarf, I got you. It helps to keep your scarf on so it's not slipping all day and, you know, where she was kind of fiddling with it before. You don't you don't have to deal with that. And it also gives you something to put your pin into to secure it. And, I mean, it can stay all day like that. You don't even have to touch it again, really. Nice and warmer for winter months here. And we have some more here undercaps. Off-white. Okay, black. okay. And these are longer under. So yeah, she so she did get some. That's good. That's good. She needs these. So here's why it looks like a scarf. Um, so this is probably easier. The black one um, is easier to see. You can see it's got like elastic in here, and it's kind of gathered. So that's like the cap part, and then typically this part in the end is you put it on, and you can like tie it. You can tie it in the back so it stays like super secure because it's not going to be one cap fits all heads, you know, so this is like adjustable. She can tie it however tight she wants or loose or whatever. And then you could just like tuck it under. You could tuck it into your blouse, whatever. Off white and black. Mm -hmm. And these are longer under caps that cover the whole neck. That is not an under cap. So this is called an Amira. What, are, what I'm getting all into it. <laughs> Amira, let me uh let me show you. Might as well. Amira. And it's it's you know, I'm not I'm not criticizing her for using the wrong term or whatever. That's not what it is. I just wanted I want to show you the difference of what she's talking about. Well, Lululemon makes one. Okay. All right, let's just pull up Amazon Might as well. Okay. So Al Amira, this is this, this that's what the style is called an Amira one piece Amira instant hijab. This literally is all one piece and you just slip it on. We don't want the two piece. Well, maybe she maybe she got the two piece. Let's take a look. I mean, that's going to complicate things. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> so hijab tube. And that's like, um, it's like stretchy, just like a stretchy tube of fabric. And that's what you put on your head. So what this would be open in the back. 
and then she would put this second piece over it so we can look at the different colors see how that's like a second piece there and then this is this is good for extra modesty because you know it covers a little bit more so if you're wearing a top that's not like buttoned up to the neck you could wear something like this um i i would i would say the women that i knew that wore an amira were very uh, they weren't so much fashion conscious oh, it's made with egyptian cotton um it was more out of convenience like, I don't want to fiddle with pins. I don't want to have to adjust it. I don't, maybe I'm not good at styling it. And they also tended to be a little more conservative. We should do a video on hijabs. I'm getting a list going and it's kind of crazy. Because how am I going to do all these videos? All right. <laughs> okay, one piece. This is a one piece Amira. This would be great for her. So this is all in one, just a hood, essentially. A hood with stuff in the front also. And how far down it comes in the back. Very nice. This is nice. Let me uh, show this a little more zoomed out. There we go. That looks nice. gives you all the measurements so if you already have one at home that you love it fits perfectly you can compare the measurements uh, forehead coverage chin coverage we know she wants that how to wear it let's take a look well, let me okay how to wear it place the bottom opening toward you like a shirt pull the hijab over your head like like a shirt Place your face inside the face opening, <laughs> like a shirt. <laughs> Align hijab seams under chin or where needed. Yeah, so just line it up so it's centered. And ta-da, you got a hijab. So this is great for people who are too busy to deal with it. They don't want to deal with it. Um, this style specifically, I had a student that... Um, wore this style pretty much all the time and she was a little bit more conservative yeah it's nice 22 dollars you know oh they got one for 15 the pink one is 15. but i think she said she couldn't order from amazon or it would be too expensive for shipping or something and they have different types you know yeah, this one has like a little bit of trim on the side. You know, you can go as decorative or as simple as you want. Modest Beauty sells these. Amira. So that's what it looks like if you're not wearing it. That's what it looks like in the back. And she's wearing a bun. You can see she's got her hair in a bun. Pink. One piece ready to wear hijab with check drill decoration makes you more charming. Well, we want that. And it says non see through, non slippery. So you don't have to wear anything additional underneath. And I will go through hijab styles. Now we have to. It's, you know, in another video because I want to show you how fancy they can get. My, my, I love the Turkish style and I, I don't, you know, I don't really know how to do it, but I love the Turkish style. Like the forehead part, it's lifted like high, it's lifted up. And I think they use like a spray starch to keep it up. So yeah, you can get like these little decorations on the side. Yeah, so there's all kinds, all kinds. You got to think with how many billions of Muslims there are in the world, you know, this is a good business for someone to get into. <laughs> and um, as many people as there are, there are as many different styles. And, you know, some people are simple and plain, some people really want to, you know, jazz it up. So this is the, um, the undercap. This is a turban style, so this part would show. Yeah, this is kind of neat how they tied that. And this is an Amira. Okay. 
Made from bamboo. Interesting. Hmm. That are already put together. Very convenient for beginners like myself. You also saw me try on the abayas that I got. So I will put a star beside the ones that I chose. If I, sh I can't remember what ones I showed you guys, but I did find some that fit and very happy. The one I was wearing today. She doesn't look very happy. Hmm. I would think she would feel relieved that she found something in her size that she likes. Like, even if she's not, like, grinning ear to ear, like, a little sparkle in her eye, like, yeah, I found some I like, and I got them. I can't remember what ones I showed you guys, but I did find some that fit, and very happy. The one I was wearing today is a size 58. I checked the tag. Okay. But I did get it from that Abaya shop before. Basically, all of the Abayas I bought were from that one shop, mm -hmm. so I do like that shop. They do have big... Why don't you give them a shout out? So if there are other Muslim women in Kuwait that are having trouble finding their size, they could go there. Give them a shout out. Their sizes. Some are just made smaller. It just depends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I asked Salah how much the abayas were, just in case you're wondering. One was 20 KD, which equals over $80 Canadian dollars. Let's verify with the spreadsheet. We're not going to take her word for it. Okay, so 20 KD is 89.54 Canadian and 65.24 US. That's that's uh, a little on the pricey side. Dollars. Not sure American. Sorry, I'll try to convert it for you. <laughs> but did you? I'm not lazy. Okay. And then oh, if she's not lazy and she did it, I guess, right? Let's see. 65. Yeah, she did. Okay. Good. This is the type of thing you need to do for your viewers. Like every for m I, 99 percent of your viewership this is all new to them you got to break things down break it down I'm like okay you know like you know just break it down make it interesting not just like here's what i did today as a foreigner in another country and then like zip through it and be like all right hope you liked it like people are interested it could really be a much more interesting channel if you went into more of the details, in my opinion. The other one was 23 KD. So, but they're... Okay, are you going to convert that for us? Let's see, 23. Oh, I got to get out the website. XE.com. 23 Kuwaiti dinars is 75 10 $75.10 in US and in Canadian. It is $103.31. So she spent about $200 today on two uh, um, abayas. They're very good material. They're also a little more expensive because they're plus size. Mm -hmm. That's true. And everything is euro sizes here. So 58. I'll try to convert that for you guys as well. There is a conversion chart somewhere online, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Google has everything. Mm hmm oh right, so here is a conversion chart for you for women's clothing so it looks like a size 60 is around a 4x so probably somewhere in no you're using italian sizes look at the now italy france and germany are all in europe correct okay so 60 56 54 are all 4x we just want the generic euro size and there is such a thing but she's just she just went to Italy for some reason. I guess because there's no other 60 on here. Uh, yeah. So so for her, for her, I would tell her when shopping, just think in your mind 58 or 60. Don't worry about this because this, you know, I mean, the conversions are going to be a little bit, you know, wonky. But you can't just go by the country of Italy. <laughs> in between a 3x and a 4x depending on how it's made like i said before mm. <laughs> all right so the closing clip was actually 
from a new theme park that opened up in Selmia in Kuwait called Winter Wonderland. I don't know uh. how long it's open for, maybe just for the winter, I'm not sure, but it's like a carnival basically, it has a bunch of rides, you can hear the people screaming. I'm not really going to be going on many rides, but I want to go on the Ferris wheel and play games. We're not able to book a ticket, it's been packed, packed, and everything is sold out. So, inshallah, in the future, we will get to bring you guys there and Winter Wonderland. Check this out. I googled Winter Wonderland and clicked on the website. Content is blocked. This website is not for your country. Wow. Yeah, Winter Wonderland Kuwait website. Blocked. Huh. I'm like, what do you care? <laughs> they, mm, that, you know... Now, this is pure speculation, pure conjecture, really. But there's a possibility that it's blocked for outside countries because they're afraid of uh, people knowing the ins and outs of different things, which is why they also don't want um, their oil fields photographed. You know, potential, maybe, sabotage. That's a possibility. Why? Uh, let's look at where it is on the map. And that's just my own thoughts. I have no idea if that's true, but I'm like, why would that be hidden from the States? Okay. Winter Wonderland is right here. Just gonna zoom out a little bit. Okay. So Faha Hill is down in this area where it's been speculated that possibly this is where she might be staying. And again, don't try to find her. This is just to connect the dots. Alcoot Mall. Uh, remember Alcoot Beach when they went there when he came out of the out of the water all like with that music and stuff. Uh, that's where this that's where that happened. Alcoot Beach right around here. So the beach is down around here. Winter Wonderland is up here. Kuwait Bridge. We've seen the drive over the bridge. There's nothing over here but campgrounds. Let's click on the map from Faha. No, not Faha Hill Beach. We want, uh... although we have seen them there, Alcoot Beach. Let's just pick an area and see how long of a drive that is. So even this looks like, even though this looks like, wow, that's like almost the entire length of the country, right? 30 minute drive. It's only 30 minutes. About 36 kilometers. Oh, the conversion. <laughs> Damn it. The conversion. We got to do it. Because it's hard to get the perspective if you don't know what the values mean and believe me i have to do the conversions i don't know them like i never they never stuck for me at all so i have to do them so 35 kilometers is 21 miles about 21 miles and this is yeah that's the border of kuwait Yeah, so it looks like it's a long distance. And up here, this is like all desert, apparently. It's like not even developed. That's on the other side of the bridge. And there could be stuff that's being hidden on Google Maps also. Some uh, countries do that. Yep, yeah, so here's little Kuwait right here. Little Kuwait. We have Iraq over here. We have Iran over here. We have, oh, so close to Saudi Arabia. They could go there. I wonder if they could drive. How long would it take them to get there? So Riyadh is the um, capital. A six hour drive, six and a half hours. A flight to Riyadh would only be an hour and 10 minutes. Wow. So close. Now, she says they're going to Mecca, and that's about a 15-hour drive to Mecca. 
And then from there, she would go to Medina. And here's where I lived over here. <laughs> Not so far, foodie beauty. How long would it take for you to drive to Cairo to meet up with me? <laughs> I'm not there. Uh, 26 hours. Okay, that's a distance. That's a distance. And do you see how you have to avoid Israel to get there? Yeah, you can't drive through Israel. As a ferry, tolls. You're de it's, a, it's a different time zone. Wow. Okay. So, uh, you know, what about if you flew? If you flew to Cairo, it would be two hours, 40 minutes. So that is a pretty good distance, even though it doesn't look like it's that far. Interesting. Okay. It's for you tomorrow, so stay tuned for a vlog tomorrow. Good night, guys. Uh, yeah, it wasn't really that interesting. I feel like it could go into so much more detail and be very interesting. Like, show the different types of um, uh, um, abayas. I'm used to calling them galabayas. It's a, but for, yeah. Like, there are so many different colors, types. Like, some are, like, flashy. Some are, like, real. you know, show the variety of what's available. Not just, like, here's what I tried on and here are some hanging up. Like, they're all black. They all look boring. It leads the average viewer to believe that an abaya is black and boring, period. <laughs> It couldn't be farther from the truth. So when we go into, when I do a video, I guess, on <laughs> on different types of scarves, hijab, and uh, and I'll throw in um, abaya also. And we'll look at all the different types. So it's not so boring and dull. You know, she's a larger woman. She's picking all black for the most part or white. Um, and maybe, you know, you know, black is slimming, so maybe she doesn't want something super flashy, but that's okay for her, but show your viewers a variety, get them interested, you know, that's just some advice, because I know the channel isn't doing very well, Chantal, you know, but these reaction channels are here for you to boost you up, and hey, I'm not going to cut you down, you know, for like every little thing, I want to try to give you some boosting up, give you a little advice, you know, I've been on YouTube for, I think, 12 years, I have other channels, I'm not going to tell you what they are, because I see that you dox people, and we're not going there, we are not going there, you know, I'm happy to provide any tips, and especially having myself been a Western, a Westerner living um, in a Middle Eastern, North African country, I know what people might be interested in seeing. So take it or leave it. I'm sure you'll leave it. Okay, everyone have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.